Hi, welcome to our morning minute today. Today, we're going to study the very last verse in the very last chapter of Philippians. Tomorrow morning, uh, we'll start another journey through another portion of God's Word. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want it to be a cliffhanger. But today, let's end things by reading Paul's final word to the Philippian church. It's a benediction. He says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The Apostle Paul, throughout the book of the Philippians, has been discussing very heavy, important, weighty things. The redemption of Jesus Christ himself. And he's been calling the Philippian Christians and us to participate in the faith and the blessings of Jesus Christ. And in this benediction, the Apostle Paul graciously reminds us, listen, that in enjoying these blessings and graces from Christ, we are not left to our own devices. We do not run the Christian race on our guts. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. Fundamental to Paul's conviction about knowing Christ and growing in Christ and being with Christ is that the whole process is an act of Christ's grace working in us. Not our strength, not our talents, not our sincerity, not our accomplishments, but purely and fully grace from start to finish. It is grace that drew us to the gospel. It is grace that will uphold us to combat sin and to live the Christian life. It is grace that is going to bring us safely home to enjoy the victory that Christ's grace has given us. Grace, grace, grace. And Paul's benediction is a final reminder of that. Paul has taught them about Christ. He's given them commands in the name of Christ. He's shared with them promises that come from Christ. And now in this benediction, he reminds them that their ability to enjoy all of these things is rooted in the presence of Christ working within them. I wish more voices in the world and in the church today could embrace this message of amazing grace. So often, our entrance into the faith, our fighting of sin, our arriving safely in heaven, it's all put on our shoulders, our incapable shoulders. And this results in one of two things, either false pride on the one hand or incredible despair on the other. Into those two terrible options comes the word grace, where Jesus Christ grants to himself all the burden of our salvation. He takes it off of your shoulders and he carries it himself to the cross and bears it himself into glory and begins to graciously prepare a place for you based on the work that he has already graciously accomplished. That is the gospel. Let's be free today from the false belief that we run the Christian race with our own guts. Let's stop fearing our own weakness and glory instead in the grace, sufficiency, and strength of our Savior working in us. Let us know that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is with our spirit. And if it's Christ who's laboring for us, then there can be no failure in regard to our soul. Paul knew this. He said early on in this very epistle, in chapter 1, verse 6, he said, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you, he will finish it. That is the encouragement that comes from a salvation of grace. Let's pray about that. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. We give up all pretense at believing that somehow it is our power or our wisdom or our faith that will save us. It is you, Lord Jesus. It is you dying for our sins. It is you planting the gospel in our heart. It is you empowering us to grow in faith and to turn away from sin. And it will be you who steers us safely into the harbor of heaven. All credit, all glory, all blessing and power be to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's live in grace today. Let's breathe and eat and sleep grace, for that is the heart of the gospel of Christ.